Welcome to Bike Life Radio from KWNK 97.7 FM, made possible by the Reno Bike Project and BikeWashoe.org. We ride our bikes out into the world with a recorder and we talk to people about their bikes and their lives. I'm Kai Plaskon. Right on. Today we're talking about the magical story-making machines. What is that, you ask? Well, it's bikes, of course. Uh, It was the title of my presentation at Burning Man this year using their census data. We're going to hear stories about bikes at Burning Man, too. Stories that are magical. Also, what is the impact, the environmental impact of a city with uh, that is primarily bikes? We're going to hear from a professor on that. First, the news. In international bike news, in Nigeria, the government has ended fuel subsidies for cars. Gas prices have nearly doubled. You can imagine that that's had a pretty big impact on cities like Lagos with 20 million people. Now gas prices are double. What are they going to do? Well, commutes. People are driving so little now that commutes uh, that used to take three hours now take 45 minutes because there's so fewer cars on the road. Transit rides are up 30% and so is the use of, you guessed it, bikes. In West Bengali, India, bike riders don't just have to worry about road rage, they have to worry about elephant rage. Some guy there in West Bengali was caught on camera uh, being chased by a male elephant. Uh, The rider was terrified, uh, but he escaped. You can watch it on YouTube, it's pretty amazing. The elephant threw dirt on its back, and so it had this plume of dust behind it as it was charging the terrified tiny bike rider. The World Health Organization has appointed a new representative to China. Mr. Martin Taylor is his name. The long story about him was published by the WHO, the World Health Organization. Now, that story ends with this line. He commutes to work by bike. You might recall that we talked about a girl on a bike hit by a Russian missile in Ukraine a a few months ago. Maybe it was even a year ago. Well, there's a news story out this month that a Ukrainian girl who lost a leg in a similar shelling is back on her bike, now with a prosthetic leg. We don't know if it's the same girl, but it is a heartwarming story. In national bike news, Forbes is reporting that there are almost 1,500 bike-friendly businesses across the United States. What does that mean, you ask? Well, it means that they support making cycling safer, easier, and accessible as a means of transport. Now to Orange County, California, where being a hooligan is apparently a crime. A city councilman there said that they are issuing fines now to people on e-bikes who are unsafe because they want to stop hooligan hooliganism. Uh, Presumably that is hooligans doing hooliganism. The cops are issuing $400 tickets for operating e-bikes unsafely and being a hooligan. Washington DC is planning e-bike subsidies to cut car trips. The city council approves $75 for bike locks and $2,000 for e-bikes. According to the article in the Washington Post, there are 44 cities and states in the United States and Canada now offering e-bike incentives. The Truckee Meadows Bicycle Alliance sent this to the city of Reno and the city of Reno is considering it. You're listening to KWNK 97.7 FM from the Reno Bike Project on Grove Street. You get your bike fixed over there. In local bike news from Bike Life Radio and BikeWashoe.org, a horrifying video of teens in Vegas is making waves on the net and leading to action. The video shows the teens planning to hit a cyclist. This is in Vegas. The rider that they hit and killed was a former California police chief. At least one of the teens is facing a charge as an adult. The community has installed a ghost bike to remember the cyclist and they held a ceremony complete with police escorts. Since then, some opinion pieces about lack of uh, safe cycling infrastructure in the city have been popping up and published. Out in Ely, Nevada, hundreds of bikers race a train every September. There's not really much else to say about that, just imagine it in your mind. bikers racing a train. Apparently it's really fun and they did it recently. Ely is really trying hard to be a bike tourist destination. So what do we have? We have a train and we have bikes. We'll race the train with our bikes. Um, Moving on. 
The Regional Transportation Commission of Washoe County has released the results of a survey on a downtown Reno micromobility network. It would be on seven downtown streets with protected paths. The public's top choice for which street to get done first is University Way, followed by finishing up that protected path already installed on 5th Street. The total cost of doing all seven streets downtown over just seven miles in the network is estimated to be $30 million or $4 million per mile. But the RTC only has $20 million. So the Truckee Meadows Bicycle Alliance is pointing out that in other cities, the cost is less than $1 million per mile to install these protected paths. And the RTC should be able to do the entire network for less than $20 million. City staff is putting together proposals now for the city council to consider, and the entire protected network proposal is expected to go before council in October or November. That's it for bike news from bikewashow.org. A reminder that Bike Life Radio airs on the first Sunday of every month at noon, right here on KWNK 97.7 FM from the Reno Bike Project. Go get your bike fix over there on Grove Street. You're listening to KWNK 97.7 FM from the Reno Bike Project on Grove Street. You get your bike fixed over there. In local bike news from Bike Life Radio and BikeWashow.org, a horrifying video of teens in Vegas is making waves on the net and leading to action. The video shows the teens planning to hit a cyclist. This is in Vegas. The rider that they hit and killed was a former California police chief. At least one of the teens is facing a charge as an adult. The community has installed a ghost bike to remember the cyclist and they held a ceremony complete with police escorts. Since then, some opinion pieces about lack of uh, safe cycling infrastructure in the city have been popping up and published. Out in Ely, Nevada, hundreds of bikers race a train every September. Uh, There's not really much else to say about that, just imagine it in your mind. bikers racing a train. Apparently it's really fun and they did it recently. Ely is really trying hard to be a bike tourist destination. So what do we have? We have a train and we have bikes. We'll race the train with our bikes. Um, Moving on. The Regional Transportation Commission of Washoe County has released the results of a survey on a downtown Reno micromobility network. It would be on seven downtown streets with protected paths. The public's top choice for which street to get done first is University Way, followed by finishing up that protected path already installed on 5th Street. The total cost of doing all seven streets downtown over just seven miles in the network is estimated to be $30 million or $4 million per mile. But the RTC only has $20 million. So the Truckee Meadows Bicycle Alliance is pointing out that in other cities, the cost is less than $1 million per mile to install these protected paths, and the RTC should be able to do the entire network for less than $20 million. City staff is putting together proposals now for the city council to consider, and the entire protected network proposal is expected to go before council in October or November. That's it for Bike News from BikeWashow.org. A reminder that Bike Life Radio airs on the first Sunday of every month at noon, right here on KWNK 97.7 FM from the Reno Bike Project. Go get your bike fix over there on Grove Street. Today on Bike Life Radio, every year we dedicate a a couple of shows to Burning Man, right? Why? Well, because it's a really bike-friendly pop-up city right here, right? And we can study the impacts of bikes in many, many different ways. For the first time, Burning Man has added bike questions to their census. We won't have the results of, of those questions for a little while, but what we do have is an analysis of field notes from the census and mentions of bikes and how they impact people from past years. We're going to hear that at the end of the show. Before that, we have a bunch of Burning Man bike stories. But first, but first, my daughters came over recently with friends uh, from her high school to play musical instruments. And they wanted me to play drums with them. And I said, well, we need a bike song, of course. And so we made a song called Bike Jump. <laughs> bike Jump. <laughs> 
You're listening to KWNK 97.7 FM from the Reno Bike Project on Grove Street. You get your bike fixed over there. In local bike news from Bike Life Radio and BikeWashow.org, a horrifying video of teens in Vegas is making waves on the net and leading to action. The video shows the teens planning to hit a cyclist. This is in Vegas. The rider that they hit and killed was a former California police chief. At least one of the teens is facing a charge as an adult. The community has installed a ghost bike to remember the cyclist and they held a ceremony complete with police escorts. Since then, some opinion pieces about lack of uh, safe cycling infrastructure in the city have been popping up and published. Out in Ely, Nevada, hundreds of bikers race a train every September. Uh, There's not really much else to say about that. Just imagine it in your mind. Uh, Bikers racing a train. Apparently it's really fun and they did it recently. Ely is really trying hard to be a bike tourist destination. So what do we have? We have a train and we have bikes. We'll race the train with our bikes. Um, Moving on. The Regional Transportation Commission of Washoe County has released the results of a survey on a downtown Reno micromobility network. It would be on seven downtown streets with protected paths. The public's top choice for which street to get done first is University Way, followed by finishing up that protected path already installed on 5th Street. The total cost of doing all seven streets downtown over just seven miles in the network is estimated to be $30 million or $4 million per mile, but the RTC only has $20 million. So the Truckee Meadows Bicycle Alliance is pointing out that in other cities, the cost is less than $1 million per mile to install these protected paths, and the RTC should be able to do the entire network for less than $20 million. City staff is putting together proposals now for the city council to consider, and the entire protected network proposal is expected to go before council in October or November. That's it for Bike News from BikeWashow.org. A reminder that Bike Life Radio airs on the first Sunday of every month at noon, right here on KWNK 97.7 FM from the Reno Bike Project. Go get your bike fix over there on Grove Street. Every year, we dedicate a a couple of shows to Burning Man, right? Why? Well, because it's a really bike-friendly pop-up city right here, right? And we can study the impacts of bikes in many, many different ways. For the first time, Burning Man has added bike questions to their census. We won't have the results of, of those questions for a little while, but what we do have is an analysis of field notes from the census and mentions of bikes and how they impact people from past years. We're going to hear that at the end of the show. Before that, we have a bunch of Burning Man bike stories. But first, my daughters came over recently with friends uh, from her high school to play musical instruments. And they wanted me to play drums with them. And I said, well, we need a bike song, of course. And so we made a song called Bike Jump. (laughs) Bike Jump. Really, that's the extent of it. Um, Aiden played guitar, and he sang that line while I played drums, and his girlfriend Mia had the bright idea of using artificial intelligence to write a bike song. My daughter played bass for the first time. Here it is. In an enchanted realm where pedal stands, a noble steed comes alive, given a chance. The metal stallion crafted with utmost care, through mists of time, the humble bicycle we share. Two wheels in harmony, spinning with delight. Pedals whisper secrets, propelling with might. Elegant spokes, like ribbons in the breeze, gliding swiftly as with the creation of trees. With graceful youth, the movements, it swiftly glides, fierce with gears, shifting in rhythmic strides. A symphony of motion, tireless and strong, masterfully weaving through the earthly throng. It's had handlebars, a compass guiding the way, breaking rugged paths, daring to stray. With each turn of the chain, a story of of adventure, freedom, and the tales of told. Across the cobblestones, it gracefully glides, a testament to human ingenuity and a tireless threat. Its frame painted with dreams of lands far and wide, a vessel for joy, a means to combine. Liberating souls, freeing hearts from strife, this humble machine holds the essence of life. So let us celebrate this marvelously elegant creation. 
bicycle, our loyal companion in every season. We didn't have a name for that song, but since we used Artificial Intelligence, how about this? Artificially Intelligent Bike Song. And from that, I came up with a band name, which is tentatively now Artificially Intelligent. We are Artificially Intelligent. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now we turn to Burning Man and Andrew Oliphant, uh, a professor from San Francisco State University who is studying emissions at the event in Black Rock City. He's using high-tech equipment on a 100-foot tower in the city that measures the air quality 10 times every second. His study is how the use of bikes cuts down on carbon emissions. Here he is. So, uh, you're listening to Bike Life Radio, KWNK 97.7 FM, and uh, we're talking to Andrew. Yeah, my name's Andrew Oliphant, and I'm a professor at San Francisco State University in the School of the Environment. Yeah, we're measuring carbon emissions uh, here at Burning Man and we use the census data to break down the relative contributions of the different sources to the carbon emissions we're measuring. And from that we've found that this city during the middle of the week when everybody's riding bicycles and there's just art cars and you know, um, you know uh, public works vehicles and so on uh, moving around, that the carbon emissions from the transportation sector is amongst the lowest of any city in the world. In fact, it's lower than the human respiration from the people here at Black Rock City. Holy cow, that's crazy. Like, uh, car emissions are lower than, than people breathing, which is nuts. I mean, it seems nuts to me. Is it nuts to you? Um, not if you, you know, I mean, it really is just a pointer to the fact that if we can uh, reduce vehicles in cities and get more people on bicycles, particularly for all of those small local trips and things, um, that we can massively reduce carbon emissions from cities. It's Transportation sector is one of the largest sectors of carbon emissions and so um, Black Rock City provides this unique example of a city whereby people are mostly, for at least a few days, getting around on foot or by bicycle and for sure those carbon emissions are a fraction of uh, the, uh, the other aspects of the city such as generators and, uh, um, and recreational vehicles etc. One of the things I've been wondering is uh, the role of bicycles that, that, they, that they could play in offsetting other emissions. Have you looked at that at all or thought about it? I have not looked closely at it from a research point of view, but as an avid cyclist, I obviously do, and I calculate my own footprint. And, uh, you know, I live in New Zealand, so I want to go and see my mother every couple of years, right? It takes me a whole year of cycling to work every day to offset the carbon emissions from one flight to New Zealand. Wow. So everybody can calculate their carbon emissions and really see the, ma the massive reductions that can take place by using bicycles, public transport uh, and you know on foot for local, local needs. That was Andrew Oliphant of San Francisco State University. He says that because of the use of, bi of bikes at Black Rock City, it has the lowest carbon emissions of any similar sized city on the planet. You're listening to KWNK 97.7 FM, Bike Life Radio, owned and operated by the Reno Bike Project. Get your bike fixed over there on Grove Street. Okay, now to Burning Man stories. This media project was approved by Burning Man, and it's called Bikes, Magical Story-Making Machines. Uh, and you're listening to KWNK 97.7 FM, Bike Life Radio. Uh, I'm Kai Plaskin, right on. Uh, and I've run into Sarah, and she got on the back of my bike repair bike, and we've been uh, looking at art cars. Sarah is an artist from... Sweden. Sweden. Yeah. So you have regional burns there, right? Yes. Uh, we have a burn in uh, Sweden called Borderland. Yeah. For this year's burn, I made um, uh, a bike uh, with a fishing pond where you can fish in the universe. Yeah. So it's, uh, it was a, a little bike uh, with um, uh, a box behind. And one person was standing in the box, and one person could be outside fishing. 
and uh, we had a donation booth where you could uh, donate gifts for the fishing pond and uh, then we gave away whatever people had donated to us yeah it was really fun yeah what did you do with it afterwards uh, we dismantled it and now the pieces are in my house oh yeah all right and then, so now you have a bunch of uh, bike universe fishing pond parts in your house if somebody wants to buy it or see it or something like that what do they do uh, they contact me oh, how <laughs> they could write me an email uh -huh. uh, yeah right. do you want to share that yeah sure my my email is uh, info uh, at uh, sara sara stenlund s-t-e-n-l-u-n-d dot com how did yeah. you come up with this idea of a, a bike that has a fishing pond on it and fishing in the universe? It's uh, an idea that you screw. We wanted to make something that was uh, interactive and something that we could uh, use to meet people on the playa and, and uh, add something fun. And, uh, yeah. The playa in Sweden? The pla yes, exactly. We also call it the playa. Yeah. Wow. And so is it sponsored by Burning Man to some extent too? Um, um, so like we have our own system of uh, dream funding so if you want to make a project you put, you write down a dream and you put it up on the dream page uh, for Borderland and um, uh, part of the membership fee is used to support different projects so that's how we get the funding so it's like a democratic process Wow oh that sounds really nice and now you own land right uh, for like the, the organization has purchased land. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we own a beautiful piece of land uh, with a lake and forests and uh, many beautiful projects are uh, starting to emerge there. Are there bikes there too, besides your uh, the one that you dismantled? There are bikes and there are sofas on wheels and uh, not so much space to drive. Uh, so not that many art cars, but we have a tractor and other necessary uh -huh. tools. <laughs> <laughs> so on Bike Life Radio we talk to people about their bikes and their lives and stories associated with bicycles. Do you have a story associated with a bicycle that you'd like to share? Uh, yeah, I have a beautiful one. Um, a friend of mine had a bike uh, that was missing a pedal uh, in the city in Italy where we lived. And uh, one morning he came down to his bike and suddenly there was a new pedal on his bike Aww. and someone had fixed it. <laughs> so it's like guerrilla bike fixing. And I think that's something really beautiful to be inspired by. Nice. Yeah. That, you know, that's the idea of this. Uh, I came out here to Burning Man and uh, there were a bunch of broken bikes and I, all I had was a knife and I fixed a bunch of bikes and people started showing up and it was out in deep playa people started showing up with broken bikes and asking me if i could fix them and i said no just but you can take those bikes and they left broken ones and took new ones so that that was uh, guerrilla bike fixing as well yeah nice then you're then you're ahead <laughs> yes yeah thank you yeah. thanks for sharing yeah thank you you want to go ride some more sure all right let's go where should we go uh, I want to check out some more art cars. All right, yeah, sounds good. Some really beautiful creations out here tonight. <laughs> Next, we talk to Marty from New Zealand. What has happened to you since you've been riding your bike? Do you have an experience on your bike since you've been here at Burning Man or an experience uh, anywhere? I haven't seen anybody fall off. I haven't seen anybody hit anything. I haven't seen anybody drunk. You haven't seen any drunk people I haven't at Burning seen Man? any drunk person, you know. <laughs> I, I, it's been really boring, my experience. But it's only half, we're only halfway or a third of the way through. Uh -huh. So you're I may see something. <laughs> yeah. Your, your experience at Burning Man is, has been boring because you haven't seen anybody fall off no? or crash or be oh, drunk. I saw one thing last night. I Ooh, saw, I saw um, the A&E, what do you call them? A ambulance come uh -huh. in yeah. and take a person... Who, who had been on a yellow bike and had some sort of heart thing. Oh, wow. Yeah, Dickie yeah, Hart. Yeah, yeah. So and they were on a yellow bike? They were on a yellow bike. Oh, yeah. Maybe they had a uh, yeah, a problem with the color. Like yeah. they got really... <laughs> 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 they didn't know how to deal with it. Yes, I, but, I, I have, I've had a boring experience. Huh, yeah. all right. Well, but it'll get better. You think so? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you know, that's a good attitude to have. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, it's not going to get worse. So, so people, you have five bikes. I have five and bikes. What do you do when you ride your bike in New Zealand? Put my head down and I go. Oh, so you're like a fast biker. 
Uh, I do road cycling for Ironman. Uh huh. Oh. I do uh-huh. mountain biking for leisure. Uh huh. I do hybrid biking for transportation. Uh huh. And I've got another road bike and another. What the hell are these things here? <laughs> they look like cookies. They look yeah. dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> they got something in them. So Marty, uh, you're on Bike Life Radio, KWNK 97.7 FM, owned by the Reno Bike Project, owned and operated by the Reno Bike Project. We're at Burning Man. Uh, did you enjoy being on Bike Life Radio? Fantastic. Yeah? Unbelievable experience. <laughs> yeah. Almost as good as riding a bike. Almost as good as riding a bike. I'll yeah. go and ride my yellow bike now. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Uh-huh. All right. Welcome. Thank you. Cheers. It was a great, great to meet you. Yeah, I really cool. appreciate it. I'm going to give you a hug. Is that all right? Cool. Yeah. Cool. All right. Yeah. You know, one of my favorite stories was a guy who had a rad bike that he had adapted into a long bike so it could hold 50 beers in a cooler. That's how many he needed to drink every day. Uh, this year, he had to change the tire on that bike and he realized that he had put the bike together in a way that he couldn't remove the wheel. So what did he do? He just cut off the entire front fork and the head tube of the bike, and then he cut off the front fork and head tube of another bike that had a good tire and welded it onto the bike, that uh, his long 50-beer uh, bike. Unfortunately, I lost that interview, my favorite interview, somewhere in the dust of Black Rock City. So I'm sorry about that, but at least I can tell you about it. Uh, Let's take a break with another song from the artificially intelligent bike band. Song about unicorns. You ready? They dance and play, in a world of magic they lead the way. With hearts so pure and spirits free, and the land of dreams where they'll always be. Their coats like silk and shades of white, in the starlit forest they take their flight. With a gentle grace they roam and roam, in a land where fantasy finds its home. Oh unicorns, they dance and play, in a world of magic they lead the way. With hearts so pure and spirits free, in the land of dreams where they'll always be. Legends speak of wishes upon their horn, granting dreams at twilight's morn. In their presence, hope takes flight, and the softest glow of the pale moonlight. Through enchanted forests, they softly tread. In their eyes, secrets of the world are spread. In their presence, worries fades away. In the company of unicorns, night turns to day. Oh, unicorns, they dance and play. In a world of magic, they lead the way. With hearts so pure and spirits free, in a land of dreams where they'll always be. In the random realm of wonder, where dreams take flight, unicorns roam, a breathtaking sight. In the heart's true quest, they'll forever see, in the land of dreams, where they'll always be. The Artificially Intelligent Bike Band. It's my daughter's band, and she plays bass for the first time. I'm really proud of her. Now back to our interviews at Burning Man. Uh, you're listening to Bike Life Radio, KWNK 97.7 FM. Uh, we're at the uh, communist uh, coffee. Rock City Communist Party. Fish sticks and coffee, uh, which is wonderful. And uh, do you have a, a communist bike story? I don't a have a communist what? bike story. You have story. to think of one. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, I have a capitalist bike story. Oh, you do? Yeah, thank you right. to the uh, Reno Bike Project. Cool. Nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I bought a bike uh-huh. from the Reno Bike Project eight years ago. Uh-huh. It's been out here every year since then, including Renegade Sands 2020, you know, because I'm not a maniac. And... Uh, it's kind of been a pride of mine because a couple things, two things. One, never been tuned, never done anything to it. No bike loop, no chain loop, nothing. Just like a little bit of pump. It's here like a now. magic bike. <laughs> it's a bit of a magic bike, yeah. Where is this magic bike now? Okay, so it's over at Camp Threat 615 and D. So not here? No, it's not here. Darn. Because this is the first year in eight years that... 
I've, I've been, I'm a little uh, worried about actually getting on it and riding it because it has this, uh, it's not a skinny like road bike tire, you know, the, the smooth ones, no tread, right? It's more of like a fat bike tire that's super smooth, no tread, like super smooth. And I can't replace it. I can't find, I want that, right? And I can't find a replacement for it. And it's just lasted for this long, but now eight years in, now that bike tire, which has been the definition of the bike itself, right? The defining like, ooh, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Ooh, nice. Is the tire in the front? Yeah. No, it's in the back. Oh, really? Yeah, so... Oh, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, so I, I, like, I would love riding around and then finding my own path later on and being like, ooh, I've been here. And, like, riding around and being like, oh, there's a smooth, there's a smooth drag right there. There I am. Oh, oh, wait, there I was. And now here I am, you know? And so now the back tire is uh, starting to rip apart and shred and the tube is still good but the tire itself is not and I'm afraid to fix it because I'm afraid to lose that smooth tire that's done me such justice for eight years. That's smooth baby you know that's smooth baby like I'm I don't even want to touch my bike now because I just want that smooth ass trail you know that's all I I don't know what to do. Thanks for being on Bike Life Radio. I appreciate it. All right. So, all right. You're listening to KWNK 97.7 FM, Bike Life Radio, and we're talking to whom? My name is The Rod. The Rod. Wow. You have a bike story to share. Sure. All right. Yeah. Tell us. Okay. So, it is now Thursday morning at Burning Man. I have been here for one week. I showed up with a flat tire on my bike, and I still haven't fixed it. That's my story. You came with a bla- uh, broken bike. I came with a broken bike, and it's still broken, and I haven't left my camp except to come to center camp. Ah, uh, uh-huh. Yeah, so you need some help. No. Oh, you don't? No. You don't. <laughs> I'm just lazy. <laughs> Listening to Bike Life Radio, KWNK 97.7 FM, uh, and we are at Burning Man, uh, and there's a bike here that uh, we're repairing. What are we doing to it? Uh, Dave, Dave, yes. right? We're here with Dave, and Dave's bike needs repair. What are we doing to it, Dave? Yeah, well, first, um, you pointed out that the bike chain was too tight, and so uh, it looks like, and it's pretty rusty, and that combo means that it might have just busted at some, at any time, bike can cross the play, hitting a dune or something. So it was, a, it was a problem waiting to happen. Yeah, yeah, and that's the worst. <laughs> when you, especially if you know it's going to happen, and then uh, you let it. <laughs> and, and then now you're holding something in your hand too. Yeah. So the uh, crank and the um, was bearing was full of the ply dirt. What? Uh, yeah. <laughs> believe it or not. Well, you know what? I think what maybe what contributed to it was that they um, hosed the streets. And I made the mistake probably of riding in the wet street and just caked everything. So you're caked. the reason why I may be every the reason. Why, why this bike is destroyed, yeah. almost destroyed. Almost. No, um, I, I, you know, <laughs> <laughs> the um, probably what happened is that no one ever rebuilt the bottom bracket. Um, and so one of the things that people don't know is that when you get this is a rental and uh when you rent a bike from the rental places out here the bottom brackets have not been rebuilt and they need to be rebuilt and it be, and and what they're doing is they're renting you a problem yeah. and that's not good well yeah they're renting you a big problem um because if you're out a couple miles out if you decide to take a big trip it can be hot and you have only so much water, then you're kind of stuck out in the desert, even though you're right next to 80,000 people. So um, it's it's a big deal. And I, w- I didn't think about that too much, so I thank Akai for pointing <laughs> that out. Just well, what I really want to point out is, is so that people don't have these, they don't rent problems. And, uh, and I want the bike repair or the bike rental places to repack their bearings. So I'm going to have a conversation with them, hopefully on the way out if I'm not too tired. Uh, and hopefully they'll pay attention. Or you could do that, Dave, yep. and uh, tell them that Kai from Bike Life Radio said, repack all of your bearings every year so that you're not renting people problems, yeah. right? Yeah. 
Yeah, no, I appreciate that. And it, it would uh, make the big difference between someone's burn if their bike breaks down. Yeah. I can't imagine not having a bike out here. Considering all the efforts you have to go through to get a bike here, to have it break out there when it could have been preventable is a big deal. So, yeah, we yeah. just studied. I'm, I'm doing um, uh, some work for Census this year at Burning Man. And so we have something called Field Notes. And they're really a really rich data set. Um, that uh, people can enter any information that they want. There's a, a, an open-ended question and they can write whatever they want. And uh, even though there's no questions about bikes, they mention bikes a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and the number one thing that people mention is that their bike is needed for survival. Yeah. And uh, of all the things, emotions, transformation, um, drugs and alcohol, you know, they. People mention bikes in all of those sections, mm-hmm. but in survival, it's like three times as much. Like people consider it a survival tool. Yes. And so uh, you really hit the nail on You're the right. head there. No, that's a good point. I would be nervous of if I didn't have, a, I'd be real nervous about how to make things work here if I didn't have a bike. Yeah. 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 So. All right. Oh, well, yeah. Dave, let's uh, finish up, huh? Yes. It's, yeah. already, it's looking good. You know, grease is good. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'd like to have some grease on there. Uh-huh. All Excellent. right, I appreciate your help. Right, yeah, no problem. Uh, yeah. So, is that thing clean? Or? So. Uh, so, we're near center camp and uh, we're talking to who? Cliff Bays. Cliff Bays, I'm just in time. Hi, uh, and so you've got a bike story to share, don't you? That's right. Uh, what is it? Uh, one time, my friend and I were riding back from his girlfriend's camp early one morning, and uh, his back tire just exploded. It was loud. Anyway, he uh, as soon as as soon as that happened, all the people like poked their heads out of the out of their camp to see what it was, and um, this they all just started coming out to us, and like bike pumps in hand, new tubes, coffee. Like, like this amazing drink. I forget what it was, but it was just some amazing exotic like breakfast cocktail. It was just amazing. Wow. So if you need help, blow up your tire beyond its capabilities until it explodes, and people will come running with right. With it was just things. amazing the the speed that everything just happened immediately. You know, in fact, um, the guy, one of the guys that came out, uh, saw my friend's tattoo, and it was like I think University of Nevada tattoo or something, or his frat tattoo. And he goes, oh, my son is in that frat. And he goes, well, who's your son? And of course they knew each other. Huh. And then he's like, dude, is he out here? Because they're really good friends. And uh, just a few minutes later, waiting in ice line, they got together and saw each other. Huh. Wonderful. Yeah. Fantastic. That's a good bike story. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. Well, You have any others that you want to share? It's your favorite one, probably. Huh? That's my favorite one. I think that's it. <laughs> so, as you're walking around, because you're not riding a bike right now, do you think about that that story sometimes on your own, or you know, when does it when does that bike story come to mind? Usually, when I hear the same thing occur throughout the, the uh, do you go running? No, I, I mean oh. not usually. I don't have the proper <laughs> tools to, to help out. You need them. to get them. You're you're right. Yeah. I do need to get them. Uh, and then go whenever you hear the same thing happen, go running to wherever. Yes, yeah, absolutely. It, like you need a siren. Be there to help because I mean you're really just helping yourself. Mm-hmm. It's because I think that we're all like the same consciousness behind our eyeballs, you know. So um, if you help someone, you're just basically helping yourself out. I mean, yeah. it's you know it's really the same thing. It's the whole golden rule to do it, do unto others as you'd have done to you. So. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was going to ask you to talk more about that, but I think you've said everything that you have to say about helping others that it's, it matters and is it does important. Matter. Yeah, it does matter. Yeah. And you know what is a really neat opportunity is that there's so many people here who need help with bikes. So yeah. for the first time, we have uh, questions in the census about how your bike got repaired, if it broke, how it got repaired, and whose bike you used, if it was your own or somebody okay. else's yeah. or a bike share I, or whatever. I actually do have another quick bike story. Well, go for it. Um, the very first year, 2011, I came out here and I come from Texas. I, I loaded down my uh, my Volkswagen Rabbit and it was like drove the 1600 miles out here to, to have my first burn. 
and but I knew a friend out here, a photographer named Trey Ratcliffe. So we were hanging out and throughout the week, and then you know I went by his trailer one day and opened the door, and there sits Tom Anderson of MySpace, and I. You know, ch chatted with them for a little while. People don't know what MySpace is. Anyway, go on. Well, you know, I'm sure a lot of people still do. Anyway, um, he, he, you know, he said he didn't have a bike that week. So I loaned him my bike and off they went. So fantastic. Wow. You know, okay, so uh, you helped Tom Anderson of MySpace uh -huh. get around the playa. <laughs> wow, that's cool. Did he give you a bike back? Oh, yeah, he gave me my bike back. Yeah, yeah, yeah he owes me one. No, yeah. <laughs> Have you been in contact since? Oh yeah, he's a, he became a great photographer since he sold MySpace to Rupert Murdoch, and and uh, he, he that's why he was with Trey because he wanted to learn from the best, and and so um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Wow, that's a great bike story. What what would you tell him uh, that he owes you? You know, I'm gonna maybe save it for something big. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, well, I uh, I hope that uh, you get repaid, but I think just you know maybe no, the I'm, stories. I'm, it's all in jest. I really don't expect anything, of uh -huh. course. <laughs> Excellent. Say your name again for me. I'm Cliff Bays. Cliff Bays. All right, Cliff Bays. Thank you for being on Bike Life Radio, KWNK 97.7 FM, owned and operated by the Reno Bike Project. It was my pleasure. All right, thank you. I'll let you go on your way. All right, man, I'll awesome. give you a hug too. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> a reminder, this is Bike Life Radio from bikewashow.org. That's a hard rhythm for you. I'm approved by Burning Man to, to uh, interview people for Bike Life Radio. Do you mind if I talk to you really quickly yeah, about sure. your bike? All right, excellent. So you came uh, here and came to a screeching halt, right? Yeah. So that's a result of uh, your brakes being glazed. Okay. And so you can uh, sand them, and then they won't screech as much like that. But I noticed the way that you were riding. You've got. Let me let me show you here. Uh, go ahead and turn towards the bicycle. Um, notice that you you have three gears here in the front, and you're in the smallest chainring in the front and the smallest in the back. And your your derailleur is at its extension, so it it can't go any farther. What you're really supposed to do is, if you're in the small smallest gear in the front, you should be in the top three in the back and if you're in the middle you can use all of your gears and if you're in the biggest chain ring you should really only be in the bottom three. Oh wow that is so interesting uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> i literally would have never known that and now i'm like how will i retain that that's yes. amazing so you're saying i should have the this one back here and this one should be closer to it uh-huh oh, yeah okay. Okay. if you're so this is for the, the the smallest gear in the front is for climbing hills mainly right. yeah and so uh what's your name andrea andrea uh you know one of the things that we uh talked about in the census data is uh -huh. that women ride a lot at burning man and are often very surprised with uh the importance of bicycles at burning man and so they mention bicycles in the data like twice as much as men do when they come to burning man Got it. yeah so uh would you like to share a bike story a bike story uh, do i have one I'm on the you spot. You have gorgeous right? teeth, by the oh, way. Oh, thanks. I just brushed my teeth. Oh, you so, did? Yeah. Yes. yes. They're uh, so bright and shiny. I broke a tooth. Uh, not here at Burning Man, but like six years ago. And then I was chewing on a package. Uh, I, I broke it biking, and I fell off my bike and mashed my tooth into a rock, and it broke off. And then I fixed it, and then I was chewing on a package to try and open it, and it broke off. And so I'm going to get it fixed soon, like next week, which is good. Wow. Yeah, yeah good yeah. for you. That's yeah. awesome. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I have one for you from Burning Man. I'm sorry that I don't. Well, no, off playa. Uh, um, well, I mean, I had a scary moment, but it was, it wasn't like a big deal. I was like, when I was in SF, I would bike everywhere, and I was living by the inner Richmond. And there's like a, a rail line uh -huh. and it was raining yeah. and I, my tire got stuck in the rail line Oh my God. and then I fell over and then this car like darted around, but it was like totally fine. And I was like, I'm alive. Yeah. This is great. This <laughs> and you didn't great. get hit by a train. I didn't get hit by a train they, or, a, or a car. Yeah. So you weren't riding a mountain bike, were you? No, it was a, it was a road bike. Yeah. Ah, uh, yes. I, you know, I didn't bring a, a helmet to Playa. Do you bring no, one? No. Uh, okay. I, I actually, I, I rarely wear a helmet when I'm out riding in a city. Mm -hmm. uh, Riding is not dangerous if it weren't for cars. Right, yeah. totally. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Now, where are you off to now? Um, I'm trying to go to the Rudest Temple. I'm actually pretty late. Well, uh, now that you know this about the bicycle, yeah, can you, help me do yeah, you want to get in the right gear, right? <clears throat> That's okay. your goal. 
Okay, so I haven't, so I bought this bike right before Playa, and so I haven't ever even changed the gears on it once. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> like, literally. And I know you're supposed to move while you do it. Uh-huh, yeah, you, you do. Yeah, you, you move while you change your gears. So shift the left one first. Whoa, we had just had a bike accident. Oh, my God. Oh, and his seat fell off. Oh, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> He's riding around with a seat that's unattached. You gotta be careful. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, you can go a lot faster and, and you'll be a lot happier, I hope. Hey, just in time. Yeah, oh. <laughs> I thought you were talking to somebody else. Handsome. Have a good one. Thank you very much. Have a safe ride. Let's take a break with another song from the Artificially Intelligent Bike Band with a song about power. One, two, three, four. In the halls of power, where the secrets are kept, there's a game they play where the people will slept. Talk of justice with a wink and a nod, but solid with God. Oh, it's comedy, oh my God. Oh, the corrupt government, what a show they stage. In the fancy suits and the gilded cage, they promise to change, but it's all for show. And this, where? What? Yeah. Political circus, where does the truth even go? They make empty promises with a straight face while behind closed, closed doors are in a race to line their pockets and grab all they can in this comedy of errors. It's a grand scam. Oh, the corrupt government? What a show they stage and their fancy suits and their gilded case. They promise to change, but it's all for show in this political circus. Where does this truth even go? They tax the poor and spare the rich. This upside down world, it's a glitch. They're supposed to serve, but they serve themselves. In this tragic comedy, who needs their help? So let's raise a laugh in the face of despair. For in humor, there's truth and we're aware. That in this theater of politics so absurd, we find the humor in each corrupt word. Oh, the corrupt government, what a show they stage in their fancy suits and their gilded cage. They promise to change, but it's all for show. This political certainty is where does the truth even go? And this comedy of errors will stand our ground with the laughter as our weapon and truth is found. For once in the face of corruption, we'll rise above it, and in unity and humor, we'll push below. That was a good that was exhausting. Yeah, that was a fast, fast tempo. Yeah. That was the Artificially Intelligent Bike Band with a song about power. Again, this is uh, my daughter playing bass for the first time and uh, Aiden and Mia on uh, vocals and guitar. And now is the part of the show that everybody's been waiting for. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, we gave a presentation at Center Camp at Burning Man on bikes at Burning Man and, and the data that is in the census. So here is part of the presentation where I'm reading people's experiences that they wrote down in field notes for the census at Burning Man. Um, I've only got a few minutes left here, so I'm gonna read some of the data here. Uh, transformation, that was very important to, to uh, one of our great bike owners uh, here. So I'm gonna read one of these. How did Burning Man change you? When, how? Please explain. Day, day one, I was so exhausted from the Burner Express and was feeling down. Thought they'd lost my bike. When I met a person who helped me find my bike and took me on an amazing tour of the playa in his art car with a bike on top. And I rode it during sunset. All right, another, another one. How did uh, Burning Man change you? I have learned many camping skills coming here. Also, I learned to ride a bike. Yes. Uh, and, and, and that's pretty common here. A lot of people learn to ride a bike and a lot of kids learn to ride a bike here. Um, now, did Burning Man change the way you relate to other people? Yes, you do you, boo. People are uh, what they are. As long as no one causes harm, let them be. If someone is spewing darkness, bike away. <laughs> These are things that people write in the field notes, right? Uh, relationships. Yes, my ride home, well, okay. Have you ever uh, met someone new and fallen in love in Black Rock City? Please describe. Yes, my ride home fell through on the last day after, and so after crying, I got on my bike and I rode around Black Rock City recognizing license plates from my home state at the time. And I asked camps with those plates if they had spaces and four camps redirected me later. And I ended up at a camp uh, that pointed me to a guy packing his car to leave. We both had come to find our next relationship. We have since split up, but it was a transformational relationship. All right, relationships is one of my favorites on here. Um, the survival one is not as fun, uh, for sure. But uh, another relationship one. Yes, I was at the mob camp 
Uh, her name is Lindsay. Her bike got stuck in the mud because of a water truck. We started chatting, hit it off, and we had a few playa dates. One of my most cherished items is a Polaroid photo of us on an art piece. So I'm here taking pictures of people with my instant camera. And a little happy face. Uh, we don't know what happened to that relationship. Uh, I'm a bit shy. I haven't made any love connections. I talked to someone named Tony. He got his bike stolen. He's a vegetarian and has sexy lips. <laughs> Um, all right, uh, I gotta, uh, I gotta wrap up everybody. Um, but I am going to go for a ride, and you can uh, read these, or I can read them to you on our ride. Uh, and we're gonna go look at a bike sculpture. I do want to thank the th uh, census uh, for uh, providing all of this data and allowing me to evaluate it. And I want to thank all of you for being here and our audio engineer. Uh, so let's give ourselves and census a round of applause. Thank you. That's it for Bike Life Radio, our Burning Man, Bikes Magical Story Making Machines edition. If you missed part of the show or you just want to hear it all over again because you loved it so much, you can catch it on Spotify. We ride our bikes out into the world and we talk to people about their bikes and their lives. Bike, Ro Bike Life Radio is made possible by BikeWashoe.org and KWNK 97.7 FM in Reno, Nevada, owned and operated by the nonprofit. Reno Bike Project on Grove Street. Get your bike fixed over there. I'm Kai Plaskon. Right on. We're going to close out today's show with The Artificially Intelligent, another song from them, my daughter's band, where she plays bass for the first time. And this is a song about an old dog named Winnie. My daughter's friends used artificial intelligence to generate the lyrics. One, two, three. In the, in the corner of a room, there lies a gentle soul, an old female dog named Winnie, with stories to be told. Her eyes, like windows to the past, so wise and kind, through the sands of time, dear Winnie, you shine. Oh, Winnie, your years like pages in a book, with every chapter a deeper look. You've walked this path with grace, it's true, oh Winnie, we celebrate the love of you. She chased her tail in the morning sun, in her youthful days, oh, how she'd run. Now she rests, her paws worn and fine, our old friend Winnie, a love so divine. Oh, Winnie, your years like pages in a book, with every chapter a deeper look. You walk this path with grace, it's true, oh, Winnie, we celebrate the love in you. Through the laughter and the tears we've shared, you've been a friend who truly cared. Your loyalty, a love so strong, and the course of life you've so along. As the firelight flickers, casting shadows tall, Winnie's presence warms us through it all. Though her shapes may falter, though her steps may falter, her spirit shines in the heart of this old dog named Winnie. So fine, oh Winnie, your tears like years like pages in a book, with every chapter a deeper look. You walk this path with grace, it's true. Oh Winnie, we celebrate the love of you. In the tapestry of time, your thread, your threads entwine. Our dear old friend Winnie loves design. In your presence, our hearts align. For you, dear Winnie, 